Welcome to the Daily Audio Bible on the Street Lights America podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Daily Audio Bible. In our last episode, we covered the genealogy from Adam to Noah. Today, we will be covering chapter 6. This is where God gives Noah instructions on how to build the ark to survive the oncoming flood. But it also addresses some other rather interesting interactions. So without further ado, let us begin. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, And indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them from the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its weight 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set a door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth, to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And to every living thing of all flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds after their kind, of the animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing and the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him. So he did. And that wraps up chapter 6. Now, one of the things I want to just kind of touch on that always gets overlooked, kind of glossed over because it seems so awkwardly placed, is while God is talking about man being evil, he's also talking about, quote, sons of God coming to earth and then and mingling with the daughters of men. Now, it's interesting that the book of Genesis only mentions it here, and it's like very, very brief. Basically, the fallen angels mingling with the daughters of men. Now, just bear with me for a moment as I bear out into some different territory for a moment. 
There are sets of books. There's actually a collection called the Sefer, which has everything that our King James Bible and all the Bibles we are familiar with. It has all that plus some. And what I find so interesting is how in these other books, and some of the uh, books actually go over these instances way more in depth. Now, I'm going to say this up front. I don't think we necessarily need to hold on to the Sefer like we do these scriptures here, but I do find it kind of interesting to read, if nothing else. And sometimes it actually sometimes sheds light on things that you're kind of like, huh, makes more sense. I'm not going to push the Sefer. I don't, I never have, never will. But it is interesting to look into these other texts that were once part of the scriptures and then they got decanonized years later, much like the Apocrypha. Now, what's perhaps more important here, though, is not even that incident, but rather the judgment that has come on humanity because of their wickedness. As much as God is abundant in love and mercy, he is also a just God. By the time the flood came around, Mankind was so wicked that Noah was the only one with a repented heart, the only one who truly listened to God and cared about his relationship with him. And if you take a good look at the world today and see how wicked it is, I kind of hate to imagine being the only righteous or just person in the entire world surrounded by everything that we can observe now. And I'm going to quickly use this to kind of jump forward all the way to Revelation really quick because, again, there's going to be another time of judgment where God raises the dead and he judges everybody according to their works and deeds. And there's going to be a time where he actually reigns on the earth for a thousand years before that even. Now, one of the things that Jesus made clear is that he would not return until everybody heard the gospel of Christ. And on top of that, I personally believe that he's also going to wait until absolutely nobody else will follow him. And nobody else will listen to just you or me, or just listen to his Holy Spirit when he communicates. As it is, God waited until there was a single family left on the earth to destroy it. And if you ask me, that's an awful lot of tolerance and an awful lot of patience. In one of my previous podcasts, uh, titled God's Patience with Nations, I actually go over this more in depth. But when Abraham, years later, has a discussion with uh, God about Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham gets curious to know how many righteous people would have to be left in the city for God to not judge it. And God would spare the city for as few as ten. Now, people look at this and they automatically see a judge, a judging God who would just wipe out a whole bunch of people just because... He doesn't like the way they act. Well, for one, God made you, not the other way around. It's not like this earth is a product of evolution and then some space aliens come down in their saucers and launch a full-out war and wipe us out because we don't follow their kind of hygiene or whatever. Seriously, every sci-fi movie, even some of my favorite superhero ones, are off that. No, the difference here is that God actually made us. And he made us to have a good, perfect life. We don't have it now because of our sin, because the decisions that Adam and Eve made, and the decisions we continue to make now, because now we're, we're basically caught up in the motions of sin. But it is incredible the kind of patience God has with nations and individuals. I actually want to encourage you to go back and listen to that podcast. It, it is titled, God's Patience and Christian's Duties Towards Nations. Yeah, a very wordy uh, description, but I honestly couldn't think of a better uh, title. And that will conclude today's audio Bible. In our next episode, we will cover chapter 7, and we will see the flood come to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are really taking time to absorb God's word. I know I'm starting way at the beginning, one bitty chapter at a time, but I hope you will take the time to study God's word on your own. Go anywhere in the Bible you feel God's telling you to go. Open it up, read, study, pray, let him lead you. I am flattered that you will be listening to this, but I do hope that you will take the incentive on your own to study. 
Thank you all so much for listening, and may God bless you and continue to guide you. Thank you so much for listening to the Daily Audio Bible. If you like what you're hearing, please be sure to subscribe to this podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or at streetlightsamerica.com. Also, make sure to listen to our regular podcast as well, where I like to address specific topics or subjects related to the Bible and our relationship with God. If you need a prayer request, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know. I'll be more than happy to pray with you and for you. Just go to streetlightsamerica.com, click on the home page, and then click Submit a Prayer Request. Also, be sure to check us out on our social media pages. We are on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And once again, thank you so much for listening, and may God bless you. I'm doing this the hard way. Sometimes you gotta learn the hard way. Sometimes you gotta try and find out for yourself.